Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, March 29, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, there's a lot on the docket and we're going to go through all of it dating back to Friday when the market had this enormous rip your face off rally into the close. We had a little bit of follow through today, but nothing to speak of and they couldn't really hold the game. Doesn't really mean anything. It's a Monday. We have turnaround Tuesday and with a flat day on Monday, which way does turnaround Tuesday go? Does it go up? Does it go down? We'll cover all that. What I'm going to do first is step back a little bit and cover a couple of administrative items. First, I need your feedback on a couple of pieces of equipment. As you know, I had an echo problem in my office. Okay, so I've been working on the echo problem, and in the midst of doing that, I decided, well, maybe I can upgrade the microphone, see if that helps to make a difference. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do half the video on one microphone, I'm going to do the second half of the video on another microphone, and what I'd love for you to do is give me feedback on which microphone I should use going forward. We'll call it A and B, one or two, it doesn't really matter. This would be the first one, and the one I switch to in a few minutes will be the second one, provided I remember to make the switch. But either way, I'll tell you when it's coming. Let's get back to the S&P, let's see what's on the docket. All right. What are the two horizontal lines on the screen? We'll get to those later. I'm talking about the ones up top, 392.90, give or take, and then there's a 392. That's going to become clear when we get to inside the numbers. Incidentally, you can see here, and I'll move the chart over, that the low of day happened to be 392.81. So the question becomes, hey, did you catch the low of day? Well, kind of, sort of, again, we'll get to that in a moment. Did they, from a daily chart perspective, recock the gun again? They may have. It looks like they have. We talk about this several times. Here, they go up and they pull back. That's a recocking of the gun. They do it again, they pull back. Another recocking of the gun. They do it again, they pull back. Another recocking of the gun. Where did they pull back to this time? Right on the money, within pennies of the red line, 383.65. That's going to be important to us based on a weekly close, just as a refresher. So let's just fast forward. All right, we already know that Friday they had an end-of-day jam session, an afternoon jam session. Today, on Monday, they've hung around Friday's highs. So that, in and of itself, generally speaking, is bullish behavior. Let's cut to the chase. Are they going to make a new high, or are they not going to make a new high? And here's what I'll say, and it's coupled with the next thing we're going to talk about. It doesn't make any difference. The same thing applies. Whether they make a new high or they don't make a new high, the market has an appointment with lower prices. Whether they start heading over to the appointment this week or next week or last week, it really doesn't matter. They're going to get to the appointment. Now, I understand all the haters out there that send me the hate mail about being wrong and all that stuff. Here's the deal. What I've said was, we're looking at a multi-week, likely a multi-month type of corrective situation. We haven't seen it yet. It really hasn't started yet. In theory, in concept, the character of the market has certainly changed, but we're still hovering around the highs in the S&P 500. Now, remember I said that. We're hovering around the highs in the S&P 500. And why not? All the Dow industrial watchers out there, the DIA, were hovering around the highs in the Dow as well. Dow's not my favorite index. It's 30 stocks. It's not representative of the market. Where are we in terms of time? From a time perspective, the market has essentially run out of time. Doesn't mean it's going to turn on a dime. We've done this before. If you've been here for any length of time, and watch the tops and the bottoms in the past been made, sometimes, especially on the tops, it takes time. Bottoms tend to happen on a dime more often than not, but tops tend to take time. They can be a process. And by the way, the longer the process takes to make a top, the worse the bear market or corrective phase is going to be. Meanwhile, we're at the end of the quarter. Can they send the market up into the end of the quarter? And the answer, obviously, is yes, they can. We're close to 4,000. We've talked about this before. 400 in the SPY. Wouldn't be anything for them to spike it. 
4,050, 4,100, 41 and a quarter, something like that is certainly possible. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm not saying it's a forecast. I'm not saying I can see it happening. I'm just saying let's not be surprised if they have a jam session for another couple of days and send the market up into the end of March, into the end of the quarter. Do we know they're going to do that? No, we don't. But do they do that? Yes, they do. We're going to take a look at some intraday charts. There's also going to be an important lesson learned today, and it's really a multi-pronged lesson. So I get out your sticky notes. We're going to do it while we discuss inside the numbers because some of the numbers end up being a learning opportunity. How is that? Because the way in which a stock or a market, a chart, comes into a number matters. Not all numbers are created equal. Not all ways that numbers are reached are created equal. Doesn't mean a trade will or won't work. It just means it changes the complexion of the trade. So let's see what we've got inside the numbers. Kick off Monday, happy Monday. Wake up a little red, but normal after the type of rally that occurred late on Friday. As usual, they're working on a big breakup candle created by the late day jam session. Now that's important more so than meets the eye at zero dark 30 in the morning. Remember that last sentence. As usual, they're working on a big breakup candle created by the late day jam session. What does that mean? That means that if they're going to eat time off the clock and work their way down the breakup candle, what are they going to do? They're going to likely run a test of the low of the breakup candle. Have we ever heard this before? I think so. Little intermission, an update on the mic challenge, right? We were going to look at one mic or listen to one mic and then compare it against the other. We're not going to be able to do that because apparently using this recording software I've got, I'm not able to change mics midstream. You would think I could. I looked around inside the software, couldn't do it. I've got to get on with the video, so we'll do it another way. I'll record another video with the other mic maybe tomorrow, and then we'll compare and contrast the two. Now, back to inside the numbers. Before we scroll up in the commentary, let's just cover stocks on the move first. Nothing hit its target. Forget about this NIO thing at the bottom. There's a problem with the feed, and that was really sometime during the trading day or after hours with NIO. But regardless, it doesn't matter. Nothing hit their price objectives today from stocks on the move. That doesn't happen often, but it does happen from time to time. All right, fair enough. So let's get going with the commentary. Let's cover the early thoughts. Remember, this is inside my head as the day gets underway, as the morning starts to unfold. What are we thinking? What do we know the market is doing? What do we know the market is likely to do based on what it's doing? That's what I'm trying to get out in the early thoughts. The trend is your friend, and we've got end of the quarter this week. So right out of the chute, that's got to be in our mind. Do they even do window dressing anymore? I'll leave that up to you to answer. I don't know whether they do or they don't, but it's a term of the past. And at the end of a month or at the end of a quarter, what you used to see is a lot of fund managers, money managers, start buying or selling securities to dress up their portfolios because when the reports come out, or the portfolios get printed at the end of the month and the statements come out, the investors in those portfolios are seeing what they think they owned all quarter long. It's an old trick of fund managers. I don't know whether they do it anymore. Most people, in whatever they have, they're looking at it each and every day anyway at this point. But nevertheless, window dressing is a fun term. They recocked the gun last week and are again pushing on the highs. The awareness must be for the market as represented by the S&P 500. Now, this is the second time that I'm insinuating something is in there, so we'll get to that later. The awareness must be for the market to finish the quarter at another new high. We don't know whether they will or they won't, but that's the awareness in the pre-market or early thoughts. Now, again, this is zero dark 30, so think about what we're talking about here long before the opening bell even rings. Since they had a big push into the close on Friday, there's a lot of space down south. We'll look at a chart in a minute, and I'm going to point out exactly what we're discussing. The first real support worthy of a look likely comes in with a spike of 393. Up north, 397 would be the early target on a push higher after the bell rings. So we've got an idea if the market pushes higher, what's the objective on a real spike, and if the market drops down, where would the likely buyers come in from a support perspective? 
the buy the dip crowd, the pajama jockeys, traders looking for a morning low, whoever it is, it doesn't make any difference. And we're moving right along. 9.15, we'll let them open the day and the week before getting a handle on the early storyline. What this goes to is patience. You have to have patience. Truth be told, I didn't take a trade today. Why is that? Because I didn't like anything on the board. If I don't like it, I'm not taking it. I'm not guessing. Tomorrow's another day. There's another trade around the corner. And who knows? Who knows they weren't going to present something later in the day? We get closer to the opening bell, 921, no change, a spike of 393 should be support and met with buyers if reached sooner than later. Under normal market conditions, we should see a reaction down there. And here's another tidbit, if we see a spike, a deeper spike of 393, what are we looking at? We have the all too familiar of 392 right underneath, kind of a safety net. Right out of the chute after the opening bell, there could be some resistance Around and above 395, it's quiet and we're just watching at present. You know the routine, here's a five minute chart. I wanna get a visual of what we're discussing at least from a five minute perspective first. Then we're gonna move on to some other charts. 395 is up top, so they spike it by a little bit and they come down. Now here's the kicker. Remember the 393. 393 is around the bottom of a big breakup candle. They should spike. 393. That was my setup. That was my preferred trade in the pre market. Not to take in the pre market, but that's the trade I was looking for from the time I woke up. So they find resistance at 395 as prescribed and they start coming down. Okay, so now I've got eyes wide open. Back to the commentary. You see here, the last candle of the day on Friday was really big and they're in the middle of it. So when they're in the middle of it, there's not a lot you can do only can guess which way they're gonna go. You don't know which way they're gonna go. There's no probabilities even on which way they're gonna go. It's no different than a coin toss when they're in the middle of a range. 936, 396.41 is Friday's high and will act as magnetic the closer they get. If they can get above, the target will become 397.12. Okay, back to the chart. Now there's your 396.41. The reason that I do it this way is so that you realize You need to know what's going on before it happens. So therefore, if I know the numbers that are important before the market opens and as the market begins trading and the market begins heading somewhere and heading somewhere in a hurry, what are they doing? They're running to a destination. More often than not, as they're running to a destination, they're doing it for a reason. Therefore, they're gonna either do one of two things. They're gonna turn around and have a reaction in the other direction or They're gonna go sideways. They're gonna hang out for a cup of coffee because their intention is go to another destination. Every number that was put up on the board before the market was even open for five minutes and stuff that was put on the board at seven or 7.30 in the morning is all applicable. 392.90 is a spike of 393. 395, 396.41. You have to know your numbers to find success in the market. Let's move along and see what else we've got. 944, patience is required in this business. We must wait for an opportunity to present itself, resist the urge to guess at something. That's an awareness, and I'm just saying. It's like being an alter ego. I gotta tell you, I wish I had somebody reminding me of these things 25 years ago, and we're moving right along. 947, hanging around 395. And what I'm going to do from here is you can read the notes for yourself. If you're interested in being an intraday trader, in trading the markets intraday, in understanding the numbers, the concept behind why the numbers exist, other stuff that are teachable moments, learnable experiences inside the numbers, then you'll read the notes. You'll pause the video, you'll read the notes, and you'll go back to the chart to double check the work. But for me, what I'd rather do is I'd rather go back to the chart and bring up the pictures because we think in pictures, we can gain a better understanding of what's going on looking at the chart and understanding the numbers that were discussed right out of the gate and the ones that you're able to read on the screen throughout the trading day along with the commentary, along with the notes. Why? Because it's important. If you have an understanding of what the market is doing and why, where the numbers are and why, when you're entering a trade, you have a different confidence level. You have a different outlook 
because you have an understanding of what the market is trying to accomplish. What is the destination? Why is the market finding resistance or support at a specific place? And why does it stop when it gets there? That's a good question. Think about it like this. Let's say you're a sprinter, you're on a track, and the finish line is some amount of yards ahead. You're gonna run as far as you can to get to the destination. Your destination is the finish line. Now, if you're in a 60-yard dash, your destination is 60 yards away from the start line. If you're in a 100-yard dash, you're gonna run as hard as you can for 100 yards, and so on and so on. Wherever the finish line is, you're gonna run your lights out until you get there. Whatever the destination of a market or a stock or a place on a chart is, the market tends to run there, not all the time, but when it runs there quickly, you have a sense that that's the destination. When they get to the destination, just like a sprinter across the finish line, they begin to slow down. They take it down a gear. They're out of steam for the moment. Not that they can't keep going, but for the moment, they're taking a rest. That's a pretty good analogy. Sometimes when they take a rest, they just walk around a little bit by the finish line. Other times, they go back to the start line or wherever the rest of their team is, and that's like the market retreating back and pulling back from a big surge or a big spike into a destination. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So now we see the numbers on the board, 396.41. There was a gap above, and we're gonna see that when we go to the next chart. They didn't quite get there, but they made the attempt. 395 was obviously important. Look what happened in the afternoon. 392.90, it was a little bit of a give or take on that one. It was a spike of 393, and then we had a safety net. So now let's go to a different chart and see what I was talking about. It's all a matter of perspective. Now I know this chart's a little messy. This is an hourly chart, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it clear. We're talking about this candle right there. That is the last hourly candle from Friday. So we have a big breakup candle and we have a low. Now go back to what I was looking at this morning. This is the futures chart that I was looking at this morning, same hourly time frame. This is the breakup candle from Friday, the one that ended at the end of the day, and they start moving down. So this is what I'm looking at first thing in the morning. I'm saying, hey, if they're gonna come down to test the big breakup candle, that's the trade I want. They're gonna defend that. There's gonna be the defense sent out on the field around that low. That's just the way it works. So I look at the futures chart, and now I want to see the corresponding level. I want to see what the SPY chart looks like. Now, early in the morning, the market's not open yet. So I don't see all these candles that were developed today. I just see the big breakup candle from Friday. And I say, hey, they're going to come down to that low. And the low happened to be 392.82. So I say a spike of 393 is the trade I want. If they come pay a visit early in the morning, they're likely to either play defense at that level or just test it and run away pretty quickly. Now, in the end, that's precisely what happened. What you'll see in the notes is something slightly different. Now, they were doing it, but what they did was ate up too much time off the clock. Here's a 15-minute chart above 393. So they were playing games. Doesn't mean the trade won't work. It means I don't like it anymore. It means it's not the same exact setup that I was eyeing at 6.30 in the morning. And we've seen this too many times where this kind of thing happens and they just continue lower. Because they don't hit it right away, they're likely setting up for another destination somewhere down south. Well, that's not what happened today. And remember, the market's job is to make as many traders and investors look like fools as much of the time as possible. Another thing they do is they bring you to the end of the cliff. They want you to that point where you're giving up on the trade, whether you're in a trade and you're gonna stop out because the market's going against you, or you're looking to get into a position, but they're not doing it in the manner in which that you want them to do it. They wanna make you chase the trade. More often than not, when you chase a trade, you get issued a pie in the face. So when I'm looking at this going on, I'm saying there's no reason on the planet that they can't do this and just go lower. Wrong tool, but you get the point. Now, let's look at it from a different perspective. All that said, and that doesn't change, at the same time, go back to the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, watch what happened, think about it for a moment, 
and use the candle from Friday as the high. And what you see here on this hourly chart, the market came down to an important spot on time, did the thing where it gives you the sign and signal of a trend change, and then it did the thing where it changes trend and went back up. So all this, technically speaking, was right out of the course, lazy e-mini trader. Again, it doesn't change the fact that they really didn't do it in the manner in which I was willing to take the trade. Again, maybe I was erring on the side of conservative. That's okay. It's who I am. I would rather miss the trade. I don't get FOMO. I would rather miss the trade than get into a trade when I had an inkling it was going to be wrong. How many times do you think I've done that throughout my career? I've done that countless times. So I have experience in doing that. So I don't do that. If I don't like it, I just leave it alone. And by the way, that doesn't mean you can't get into a trade later. You can get into a trade at a higher price if yet they're still going higher. There's nothing wrong with that. Could you have bought around 395 later in the day for another move higher? And the answer is, yes, you could have. Could you have bought around 394 when they started pushing higher and closing candles above 394? And you'll see it in the notes. Go back to read the notes. You'll see that that answer was yes. So in the end, the moral of the story is, we had the low of the day nailed, lock, stock, and barrel. The way in which they did it caused me to sit on my hands. I'll get them on the next go around. All right, now let's take a look at the IWM and you have to think back of the couple of things that we mentioned before. We talked about the SPY at the highs. We talked about the Dow at the highs. I brought the chart up for a reason. Now we look at the IWM and it got taken out behind the woodshed today down almost 3%, below the 50 and 20 period moving average. Now you have to think back to something that we discussed many times, dozens of times. The market will make big swings in both directions in the corrective phase. The IWM is in a corrective phase. That is a fact. It is making big swings in both directions. So what we said before about the market is likely to make big swings in both directions in a corrective phase is actually happening. So therefore, that becomes a true statement. By the way, something just dawned on me. Back to the microphone test from before. I realized I could have unplugged one microphone and plugged another in. My fear was that the software wouldn't make the change. So I was looking for a way to change in the software since I have them both plugged in to begin with. I know there's gonna be a couple of wise guys that say that under the video. So what am I doing? I'm front running the comments. Back to the IWM. This is not necessarily a healthy chart. This is a chart that has or is in the process of rolling over. And here's the reality, here's the net net. Here's what you're likely to see, all right? You saw a high, they made a higher high, then they rolled over. You're likely gonna see the same thing in the SPY. You just may see three highs. I know this is messy, but you see a high, another high, maybe there'll be a third high and maybe that's when they'll roll over. But here's the deal. My work hasn't changed. The market still has an appointment with lower prices. And when you look at a chart or a market like the IWM and you say, hey, wait a minute, this is my favorite market leading indicator and it's down and it's rolled over. Why isn't it making new highs or at least attempting new highs or around the highs like the SPY and the Dow? It's a good question. This is a market leading indicator. Hint, it's leading the market. You just don't realize it yet. Not you specifically, but people in general won't realize what's going on until after it's already taken place. Now, the flip side, right? We have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. Could that candle, this big breakup candle, could that be a reversal candle? And it is. And could we just be running a test or a retracement of that breakup candle? And then we go off to new highs again. And the answer is anything's possible until and unless they get above the high of that breakdown candle right there and back above the both moving averages, no dice. I give you one more. Here's a weekly chart, okay? And we have a weekly breakup candle. The low is 217.67. Down for three weeks in a row, not down for three weeks total, but this, this week included in the third candle here on the weekly chart. Well, guess what? Last week, 
They had a big rally to get back and close the week inside of that breakup candle. What happens if they close the week below this breakup candle or any week below this breakup candle low? Guess what? It's lights out. What would be the next objective or target on the downside? It would be this breakup candle, which has already been tested twice. What happens on the third go around? A successful or an unsuccessful test? We'll see when we get there. What's going on with the folks down at the transportation department? New highs on Friday, a new high again today. Didn't close at a new high, but still, since we keep making new highs, there's really nothing to do or discuss in the transports until and unless, again, we see some kind of signal or sign of a trend change. Looked like one was brewing last week. No dice, new highs. Here we are. The trend is your friend until it's over. They don't make it easy by design. This is on purpose. How about the Qs? Interesting. It's not the same chart as the IWM, but it's kind of similar. But the Qs could be setting up for another move higher. So let me explain this. And this is where the different look than the IWM comes in. This could be a pullback pattern. This is a bull wedge, bull flag, bull something pattern that will generally result in another move higher. Now, whether or not they can eclipse this breakup candle and close up there is a whole different ballgame, but this is what's going on at present. As long as they stay above the convergence of these moving averages, the 100 period and the 20 period moving average, then it's going to want to push it back into the 50 period moving average and above. That's just the way charts work. That's the way price action trades. That's the way markets work. The IWM looks like it's failing. The Qs looked like they were failing down here, and then they began to recover, and they're still in the process of making what we would call a recovery-type pattern. So I wouldn't count the Qs out just yet. We can look at it another way and say, hey, maybe they're having an A, B is a pullback, and a C leg to an ABC corrective rally in the Qs. Right, We have a, a down move that starts, maybe a corrective pattern begins, and this is a corrective phase within the new pattern, which is down. So they're correcting back up, A, B, C, and then you have another leg down from there. That is a possibility. We're looking at all the possibilities. We're looking around the horn. We are the umpire calling balls and strikes. The financials, they were down today, 39 cents. The candle is green because they were down a lot more. They opened down and they fought back. They're above the 20 period moving average, but same rule applies that we discuss with the 20 period moving average. When price cuts back and forth through it too many times, it loses its significance. So I don't really care too much about the 20 period moving average here. What I'll say, is 35 is the bogey. Getting above, closing hourly above, closing daily above 35, and they're likely going to challenge and then yet make a new high in the XLF. Right now, we have no choice but to use this low, $33, as the new south side bogey. Keeping on with a bucket full of divergences, Smash Mouth had a bad day today, down almost four bucks, but it had a tremendous day on Friday. So here's the way we look at that. And we talked about this before with a different market. Look at the big breakup candle from Friday, which is this candle here. They're in the middle of it right now. Is there any significance to that? Absolutely not. They could go down to test the low of the breakup candle. They could go up to challenge the high and break above the high. We don't know which one it's going to be. And this same concept applies no matter what chart you're looking at. You could be looking at a 15-minute chart, an hourly chart, a daily chart, a weekly chart. When the setup looks like this and you're in the middle of a spot, don't guess. You have to wait for the market to resolve itself. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.